Hello, so in this video I will be talking to you about what exactly is setting out and surveying and what they are used for. I will talk briefly about the background trigonometry a total station uses to position and orientate itself and I will also show you how to set up a total station, input the coordinates necessary to set out a position and I will also show you how to carry out a survey. So setting out is used to mark a point of interest that we already have coordinates to. The point of interest could be anything from columns, slab edges or road curtains. Setting out is a very important element of construction projects as it serves to ensure that the structures and elements being built is to the necessary requirements and tolerances. Now surveying is used to check that work that has already been carried out is meeting the required specifications or for work that has yet to be completed it is used to gather information about the pre-construction conditions to aid design and logistical planning. For proposed works, the points surveyed will be inputted to create a digital map of the areas being developed. For completed works, the surveyed information will be added to a pre-existing drawing of the project and a comparison will be done to ensure that the points of interest that have been surveyed are within the allowable tolerances. So in this video, I'll be demonstrating how to set up, survey and set out using a Leica TC407. To set up the total station, you must first extend the legs of the tripod to a height that will allow the user to comfortably use the total station and spread the legs out so the tripod is stable and will not move during the exercise. You will notice that for this example, I've used a tripod star to ensure that the legs of the tripod is stable. Level the head of the tripod to a reasonably flat position if it is not already so and then place the total station on the tripod with both hands. Whilst holding on to the total station with one hand, tighten the screw at the base of the tripod into the bottom of the total station to secure the machine. Following this, level the total station using the foot screws at the bottom of the machine as indicated with the arrow. The bubble level at the top of the total station is a good indicator on how level the machine is, but the digital level that is on screen is the most accurate measure. The best practice for this is to have the face of the total station running parallel with two foot screws and then turning the two foot screws in opposite directions to centralize the total station on one axis. It is worth noting that if you're setting up over a known point that you should check your accuracy by making sure that the digital level plummet is over the known point. If this is not the case then loosen the mounting screw and gently slide the total station until the laser is directly over the known coordinate. Re-level the instrument and tighten the mounting screw. Repeat these steps until the instrument is both level and directly over the known point. Next, a new job file must be created. To do this, press the menu button and press the file management button. Press the job function that is in the following screen. For this example, I'll be creating a new job, but you may choose an existing job if it is a suitable option. Choose the job name, such as example 1, and press the enter key to confirm your selection. Enter a relevant operator name. Convention is to enter initials such as DF in this section. Once this is done, press the OK function key to confirm the job details. Now, any known points must be entered into the machine. Enter the file management page again and press the F2 function key for fixed points. Create a new fixed point such as BS1 Enter in the known coordinates of this point and press the OK function to confirm the details. Repeat this for all other known points such as BS2 in this instant. So a little information on the background trigonometry that the total station does when setting up. When free stationing, assume that the machine is placed at point P, which the coordinates are not known. If you shoot at known points A and B whose coordinates are known, then the machine can work out the angle alpha and beta and thus using the equation shown the eastern and northern of p can be gotten. If setting up over an unknown point enter the free station mode from the programs menu and press start as the job has already been set. Enter a station name for this example we'll call it sd1 and press the ok function key. On the next screen you can either input coordinates of known points that have not yet been saved or you can use previously saved points using the find function. For this example, we will input BS1 using the find function.
Now you must backside to the known point. To do so, look through the eyepiece of the total station and aim the crosshairs at the prism placed over the unknown point. Adjust the focus of the total station by twisting the collar close to the eyepiece until the prism snaps into focus. The aim is to have the center of the crosshairs lining up with the vertical and horizontal markings on the prism. Shoot at the target by pressing the function option to record the data. Move on to the next target by pressing the next point function and repeat the process with the next known point, i.e. BS2. If the results are within the guidance shown, then press compute. Otherwise, redo the free stationing process as the total station is not properly set up. If setting up over a known point, enter either the setting out or survey mode from the program's menu, whichever job it is you wish to complete. A tick should be shown beside the set job section to indicate that the job details have already been entered. Enter set station and input the station name. Again, we will call it ST1. Press enter to confirm the name and enter in the known coordinates of the station. Press the OK function key to save the point. Next, set the orientation of the station by pressing the set orientation function. Press the coordinates function to backside to the known coordinate. Choose the point you wish to backside to using the find function and press OK. Like for the free stationing, look through the eyepiece of the total station and aim the crosshairs at the prism that is placed over the unknown point. Shoot at the target by pressing the all option and record the data. Firstly, enter the setting out mode by selecting it from the program's menu. Press the start button to begin setting out. You can either set out points that you enter the coordinates of manually or you can have the coordinates automatically inputted from AutoCAD files. For this example, I will enter the coordinates manually as shown. Either way, once you have the coordinates entered, you rotate the station until the difference in a horizontal angle is approximately zero. The prism should be placed in the direction of the station's laser. It is important to note that the point of interest is along the line the total station is directed. Shoot at the prism using the distance function. The total station should then indicate how far back or forward the prism should be moved to be positioned directly above the desired point. Continue this process until both the difference of the horizontal angle and the distance is within tolerance. Mark the point that the prism is upon and continue on with the next point of interest by entering new coordinates that you wish to mark. Tolerance for setting out varies with the element that you intend to mark and it is best to ask a senior engineer on site what tolerances are expected on the project as it is impossible to mark everything perfectly and trying to do so will only waste time. To survey, again make sure that the total station is set up, level and orientated. Enter the survey in mode from the program menu and enter a point ID that you wish to survey. If you are surveying with a prism, it is important to remember to enter the prism height into the HR section that would be displayed on screen. Next, focus the instrument on the prism and get the crosshairs to align with the marks indicated on the top of the prism edge and do not focus on the centre of the prism itself. Record the point by pressing the RC button. This ensures that your point is saved in the job. Continue to target and survey all the other points in a similar fashion to complete the survey. Note that the point ID will change automatically after each point of interest is measured. Thanks for watching the video and I hope you learned something from it.